You can't see it. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. My name is Noah Ruiz and I'm a designer here at Adafruit and joining me every week is my brother Pedro. What's going on everybody? I'm Pedro Ruiz, creative tech here at Adafruit and every week we come to share 3D printing projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right, this is where we combine 3D printing and do our electronics to make inspirational projects. Welcome everybody to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. We are hanging out in the in all the different channels and chat rooms and Start off the show with paying some bills. We got <laughs> Kit Bash as the coupon code. So I'm just trying to run through the intro. It usually takes like five minutes. Uh, we got some free deals. So go to agefruitdaily.com. You can see all the cool deals. We got the Circuit Playground back in stock. And we got some freebies. You can get that stuff. You get some free shipping if you order anything over $1.99 or more in US Continental UPS. Tiers, so check that out, agefruit.com slash free. That's right. Same day delivery is an option if you're in the New York City area. Certain zip codes apply. Check out the site for uh, the shipping details or when you're in your checkout. If you need parts right away. Circuit Python meetings. Uh, this week it started, it was actually yesterday at 2 p.m. It's up on the YouTubes. These are recorded live in the Discord chat room. So if you want to be a part of the, of the code community with Circuit Python, you can check it out, see all the developers, what they're working on. Yep, it's inside the Discord chat room on the left hand side. Just scroll all the way down to the audio rooms. Yep. It'll be in there. And if you like the YouTubes, we, uh, Scott publishes the, the, the recording after the show goes live, or the meeting goes live. AdafruitDaily.com, you can get some newsletters and um, different categories. You've got to go to the website there, AdafruitDaily.com. Separate from your account, we don't spam, and we don't automatically tie you to that. So you got you to, have to you do the work. Yeah. So lots of categories, electronics, yes. printing, biohacking, circuit python, micro python. Python. Check those out. Yeah, Halloween is still out of stock, John. Yeah, we're getting, we're, they're work, they're working on it. Uh, newsletters, uh, more newsletters. This is the product focus one. Happens once a week. Adafruit.com slash newsletter. Again, you gotta subscribe for that one. Discord chat room. That's where all the magic happens. All the fun happens. Um, great place to get some project help, share your projects, uh, and just chat around with uh, like-minded people. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, open 24-7. It is a Never huge closes. thread of inspiration. A lot of people posting in there, show and tell stuff in there. So definitely Sweet. check that out. This week's project has to do with, no, it doesn't, Kit Bash. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> well, kind of Kit Bash. Uh -oh. this week's we'll see why Kit Bash. The reason thing project is Cricket-based motorized marble run. So this is an excellent design by Tulio Lassen. Lennon. Lennon. Sorry, Tulio. <laughs> And what we have here is a cricket powered motor that's driving an elevator gear. We've got some buttons on the side. We have USB for programming. We have, uh, it is battery powered, but we have a whole slot here. So if you want to plug that in. And of course, a little slide switch on the side. So we're going to take a look at the way this little guy operates. Touch one of these buttons here. Everything backwards on the camera. Yeah. Is it that one? Is it Do you want, one? To, want me to go with the overhead or? Uh, you can start with, there it is. Hey, there it goes. You want to do the overhead? Yeah. All right. So you see the balls running down the tracks. So we got like four tracks oh, wow. on here. You have enough uh, space in between the elevator gear to lift up a 9.5 millimeter bearing. What about the and lighting? And it just situation? goes on and on. We are using the UV reactive translucent blue. We have UV neopixels on the inside here to eliminate the entire uh, track. If you go over to the overhead, I mean to the uh, side view. Nice little view of that. A nice little model turn for you guys. Trying to make the kind of lighting pop out a little bit more. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can kind of see it right there. Yeah. So, so the, it's doing the audio, the UV reactant code. So every time a, a, one of the bearings goes down the track, it'll pick that up as audio. And yeah, so the microphone's there. picking up audio and yeah. um, using that to, to kind of flash the LEDs. Yeah, so there's lots of cool little interactive things you can do with all the onboard sensors on the Circuit Playground Express. So um, take a look at one of the cool things that we developed for this was actually making the sandwich that is um, holding the, the motor on top of the CPX and on top of the uh, Cricut. So a simple little bracket like this that we designed for a project that we we're going to do earlier. So all it is is just the standoffs that go right on top of the CPX like that. Can we show a little bit closer? There we go. It's just a little sandwich like that. So um, modifiable, I uh, have the Fusion 360 files if you guys want to adjust that. And we have the uh, little plate here that houses the, um, the TT motor. I have a nice little 
I'll oh, crack it on top. I didn't even notice that you have a standoff for the tab there. I normally cut it off, but yeah, that's a good way if you yeah. really need precise. Mm -hmm. There's only three points of mounting on this motor, um, yeah. so you got to make this like giant standoff. Yeah, I didn't want to make a hole in there just because of how thin the walls on the edge were. So. Oh, I see. There's no hole in it. Yeah, it just yeah. kind of elevates it. Well, yeah. Put away so it can fit mm -hmm. on there, mm -hmm. have it nice and elevated. And you are going to need a 25 millimeter long M3 screw to reach from the uh, one side of the body down all the way to the bottom of this plate. I think it's on backwards, right? The shaft goes through the... The shaft's supposed to go on the other side, isn't it? No, it goes like that. So you have your little tab here. What are the away. holes for then? Oh, these holes, so what you, it is on top of the CPX. Oh, it allows you to hit the reset button? Yes, you have access oh. to the reset buttons. You can easily get to that for make code. And That's cool. And then, um, as you can see, the way that this mounts to the CPX, or to the uh, Cricut, um, you only have the standoffs where you're not using the metal uh, standoff to attach it. You know, I just nice spaced out. Okay, I'll keep the comments. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I think you can, you can remove the standoff so you don't need you supports. You could, yeah. yeah so just a could. tip: if you guys really want to build this, mm -hmm. chop off that little standoff. I don't think you need it. Oh wait, 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 which one? That one, because there's no hole in it. What does it do? Oh, it's just keeping it balanced. That's all it's doing. All okay. done. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you don't need it. Yeah, you may not need it, uh, but it's there. It's a little extra thing. Yeah. yeah. You could always you drill can suppress into it. the uh, feature. That's right. You can in infusion. All right. Cool. Yep, so if we actually look on the inside of this, grab the handy dandy spudger, if I can find it. Yeah, spudger's a nice little tool for prying open things like this. Um, so you got this lip here on the side of the, let me do oh, something right here. So this press fits into place. There's no screws or anything like that. Uh, the tolerance for it was good enough to where we could just get that in place. So. Remove that, and you can see here's a nice little assortment of all the circuits inside here. You got the buttons on the side. All of the NeoPixels are just strung on the inside to eliminate everything. Uh, the Ooh. AA battery pack uh, tacks in the place over here, and then the USB panel mount, very handy, is mounted on the side there. Sweet. So we take a look at one that is not assembled, the parts that uh, we used to, uh, one of the challenges of this was making something that's flat on a cylindrical object. So just a little bit of geometry to, you know, flatten that out mm -hmm. and then create all of your um, elevated uh, button holders. So they're nice Sweet. and level. Same thing with the USB uh, panel mount. So that is protruding outwards. And then we have some drafts on the bottom. So it's at a uh, 30 degrees. So you don't need any support material for any of this. And of course, all of the mounts for the Cricut. Slide switch on the side. Again, same thing with drafting all of the bottom so you don't need any support materials and yeah. the walls. Um, I did use a 0.8 millimeter nozzle instead of a four because this, even though it looks um, kind of small, it's sort of big in terms of uh, volume for a printer to, yeah. to do. So if you're printing this at a 0.4 mil nozzle, it's gonna take about 12 hours. Yeah. With a 0.4, it takes about two and a half hours. Sweet. So all of the tolerances work with a four and a 0.8 no nozzle for that. So make sure that all the walls all won't be too small when you're using a fatter nozzle. Let me check that out. And let's see, the uh, only modifications we had to make to this design was actually just adding the shaft holes on the bottom, making sure that's all aligned. Oh, and yeah, making sure that this whole thing is right in the center for that. So you could take this base and add it to any other project where you're driving a gear that's completely in the middle. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the elevated gear, the only thing that we had to uh, update for this is adding the little slot that goes onto the uh, motor shaft. It just goes on there like that. Yeah, it keys into, into the it keys hole. right into place. Is it a tight um, fit? You got a hammer it in there? No, it's no good it slides right in, actually. actually good thing oh, it, has a, that. it doesn't have a hold to it. It just comes off. Sweet. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. loose and it, the, the, uh, the shape of it just doesn't allow it to strip. Exactly, nice. yeah. So you bit mount of this on top, on the, in the middle. Actually, turn oh, that on. Oh. You turn it on, all you have to do is just drop it in there, and it self aligns. And a little stopper right here goes on top of that. And again, this is all just default stuff. There was no changes. Right. That's, That's these where your things. finger would, would fit into, and you would hand crank it. Yeah. I remember which button does what. Here we go. <laughs> So it's super easy to print all these guys out. And what's cool about the uh, track is that it fits like a 140 by 140 mil bed. bed. So this, even a small printer can print. The, the way Tulio uh, designed it is, you know, it's support free, right? There's no support yeah. material here. So you can see all the way 
Um, all those fillets and stuff are sort of by design to, to avoid supports. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Am I right there? Yeah. Okay. So everything's at like a 45, like with all these yeah, arcs it's and quite, everything. It's very good. Lots of mesmerizing little tracks for all the bearings to go down. So we take a look at the learn guide for this super simple little setup. Just runs through the electronics you're going to need to set this up. Here we are. Here's the learn guide. So go to learn.adafruit.com. You can get it, the learn guide there. We Here's got all, the parts. all of the remix parts, of course, to the original design. If mm -hmm. you want to um, just operate this as a handheld or a hand operated one, this should still work, although you are going to get the force from that motor if it's in there. But uh, check out Tulio's work. Check out the video for this, too. Yeah, it's excellent. excellent job on that. And check out how small you're able to get this design. You can you click on, version? Oh, yeah. Click on that one right there. It looks like he did this on a resin printer. Oh, this one? Yeah. Oh, well, gosh. that's on his, like, finger. This is insane. Excellent. Excellent, yeah. And then, uh, you know, consider tipping the designer as well. Um, yes, definitely. Work. Yeah. He's got I'm tons of other ones as well. So check out his profile, and you can see all the awesome marble run designs he's put together. Profile. Also, check out the website, too. Mm -hmm. Lots of cool things on there. Sweet. All right. So what do we need to build this guy to motorize it? Uh, Cricut, Circuit Player Express, battery if you want to have this portable, and of course the TT motor using the 190 gear ratio. Uh, it's slower, but it offers more torque just in case uh, one of the bearings gets stuck or gets squeezed inside of the elevator gear. It'll have enough uh, tolerance to push those up. Yeah, one caveat with those, they're not pre-wired, and they only yeah. have one shaft. Yep, we'll go through so that we'll go through in the up. assembly. Go Should over we? to the circuit diagram, super easy setup for this. Oh yeah, UV NeoPixels. Yeah, this is why I scroll. Yeah, so you got those new NeoPixels. We had a bunch of them in stock, now you guys bought them up, so thank you for that. I think we got the, the great thing two. about them is they have alligator clips on them already or something? No, you got to modify okay. them. Okay, that's fine. Jumper wires, get yourself a pack. Slide the dandy panel mount USB. Yeah, I'm using those more and more. And here's the hardware. So, you know, screws. What kind of screws? They're mm -hmm. here. Also, the ball bearings. They're a 3 8 of an inch ball bearing, and you can get a pack 25 on Amazon. Yep. That's where you got yours, right? Mm -hmm. Good quality stuff. There was a question about the ball bearings. You couldn't find them in UV reactive uh, ball bearings? <laughs> uh, I, I was just joking. I don't know if they make that. For that. I didn't even think about <laughs> that. That would have been cool. Those, uh, those Kirby's. Those long. Uh, <laughs> on exposure, like see the tracks lit, lit oh, up that way. Oh, okay. I go moving on to the circuit diagram, super simple uh, hook up here. We're just uh, attaching the motor to the motor terminal. Yeah. Neopixel Channel strip two. to Neopixel strip. Yeah. This Battery is great. just plugs right in, super easy. Right. I think the only um, thing you need to, you don't even need to cut it, it's using the pre sized jumper wires. Excellent. Moving on to the make code for this. Yeah. If you guys want these parts, I got a link here, Adafruit Fritzing Parts, so you can make your own diagrams. If, uh, the Fritzing app is open source. Mm -hmm. That's what we use. Do you want to the make code? Just a nice explanation of how to set that up if this is your, if this is your first time. Tipping into the, um, like how to drag and drop the make code version of that. Installing your Cricut extension. Yep. Uploading, testing, and of course using web USB, how to hook that up. We have the link for you right there. Talk about this every week, but it is still mind blowing to be able to program right in browser. So definitely play with that. All of the different um, like animations you can do or like have it trigger with different um, sensors. Uh, definitely fun playing with all of those. Nice little mix of combinations that uh, everybody can uh, play with. Yeah, very cool. Moving on to the 3D printing. Here's some of the parts you need for that. The original design, whoa, that GIF is way too fast. <laughs> yeah, I think it must have been one of the conversion things. Yeah, so the track takes about 12 hours to print at a 0.2 millimeter layer height using the 0.4 nozzle. Um, speed about 70 millimeters a second. It's 50 to 70. Yeah. And uh, for the Ultimakers, it's using all the, the rest is all just default settings for that. Those all should work out perfectly since uh, he used the Ultimaker as well. And support material for this is the only uh, kind of bit of comp you, you know sort of thing that you'll have to uh, cut play with off in terms the standoff. of standoff. <laughs> That's my good stuff. You can cut off the standoff, but then it's going to be like completely flush with it. I believe it'll go right on top of the USB um, uh, port, so it'll, it will slam into there. That's why they're standoffs. Oh, yeah, there. more standoffs around it. And then, uh, well, it's also these components that are on top too. All right. Those will make it a little bit unstable. That's up to the command to kind of. 
Yeah, yeah. I guess you can make modify them. It. You know what? You could actually just have the standoff separate. Completely avoid having to use the supports. But if you have um, like a good yeah, so use an external like a brass standoff. Exactly. Yeah. Just or just print them out. Yeah. Print out little uh, yeah. cylinders that's why for the, that. For, that's why the fusion files are open. They're right here. They're linked right yep. there. You can just you click, click on the click on the uh, yeah. the face for that. You I've had many split up. many awesome makers say like, yeah, cool. Thanks for the fusion. I change it to work for my setup. That's really what exactly, we encourage yeah. as well. If you're using support materials, though, you can just uh, in turn on the interface layer. Now to make sure you have a nice even bottom. Uh, hopefully, we're not too much distortions if you're not using the breakaway support material. You want to show the bottom just how amazing it looks? Yeah. <laughs> this is the real reason why we printed it with breakaway, just to see how can you focus good on of the test it this is. This requires focusing. Yeah, I, can, I have to turn that off and go over here. You can go closer now. And this is point. the bottom, not the top. Yeah. Oh, I love this stuff. And it just falls right off as soon as you take it off the bed. And we showed this off last week, but the bottom looks better than the top. <laughs> and you have just a little bit of a little cleanup right here. Pretty cool. Yeah, breakaway. Definitely recommended up. for uh, parts that do require um, this sort of support material. Yeah. Last week, mine needed that as well for the motion links, breakaway. Mm -hmm. Or just, break, well, yeah, breakaway. Of course, we have all the Fusion 360 projects, files, and the CAD files. Yeah, the individual components, so if you just want the Cricut or if you just want the motor, they're there um, in the GitHub. And if they're not there, you can put it in a, a parts request via the issues tab. Right, how about assembly? Moving on to the assembly, first thing we're going to do is set up our battery pack to have a slide switch. So we're just going to cut off one end of that. Uh, extend the wire so they can reach our slide switch. I have noted there how long you're going to need each wire. It's about 50 millimeters long. So you cut those down to size. Uh, definitely don't forget to add your sh your heat shrink to this since they are going to be uh, stuffed inside the enclosure. You don't want any of those connections to be touching. Oh, from these guys, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Moving on to the wires for the motor. Unfortunately, the uh, 1 to 90 gear uh, motors do not have those attached. I think They're more for pro, pro users. You're going to bring. What is it? Bring your own wire. Yeah. So the only, the only thing is you got to be pretty careful on soldering these guys on there because it is super thin, the the wire that they have on here. You just want to be careful. You do want to elevate it just a little bit so you don't have any, you don't get any melting of the plastic or plastic. solder falling on there. That's the only thing for that. We're using the jumper cables though. So those are all nice and nicely sized. So you can okay. reach those. And those are going to attach to the uh, the bracket part. Yes. Uh, one thing to note: um, if you jump back over to the overhead, there I am. I do mention it later in the guide, but because the um, the motor is blocking access to the reset button, I did make the uh, the screw holes for this a little bit wider so that you could easily pop off the motor and then still have access to your reset button yeah. down there. And because of how long the um, the screws are, they don't flop around or anything. They are held yeah. in place, especially when you have the top of the uh, track mounted on there. It's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. So one other thing is you could break out the button, but it's going to be a I bit more I was going to do that, but I was it's scared gonna, to. Yeah, it's got like 0.5 pitch. Yeah. So you're going to need to be um, really, I know eventually really I'm going to have to do that. The reset button isn't, I don't believe it's broken out. So you do have to solder right onto mm -hmm. the, the service mount pads. Yeah. So a little bit harder. So. And one thing I didn't get around to was actually making a little slender button. So you could just press like that oh, instead right. of having to get like a something, right. you know, like a long pointy thing to mean, poke yeah. it into. Yeah. A little actuator uh, direction. Yeah. All right. All right, moving on. Just a little caveat of yeah. the way that this is set up. Um, Mounting it, mounting the CPX onto the uh, Cricut. It comes with the included standoffs you're going to need. Hook that up. Sorry. Mm -hmm. The uh, hardware as well. Mm -hmm. And then you can just mount that on top of the Cricut. And then we'll just hook up our motor to the mot motor terminal. Hook up our USB onto the uh, USB panel. And just route that around. You can see how that is all laid out. Slide switch uh, easily snaps into the um, to the little port on the side there. Mm -hmm. One tip though is if you do want to increase or decrease the tolerance for um, slide switches going in, the two little metal tabs on the side there, you can bend those 
uh, ever so slightly, uh, either outward if you need to increase the tension or inwards if you need to decrease the tension. That definitely saves on having to reprint a part or having to match it. And then you get another side switch that has the tabs bent a little bit mm. differently. Yeah. So um, we do have the accommodations for that. You or hot to, glue. <laughs> you can hot glue it as well. It's probably Keep it in there forever. Yeah, yeah. so you'll mount that into at an angle, press if it's into place. It has a little wall that'll keep it from coming out. Mm -hmm. And then we will mount our uh, battery pack. Just use some tack on the side there. Should keep it in place. And then we'll just mount the optional NeoPixel strips if you want to eliminate the rest of the track. That's pretty much it. Ice Palace. Ice Palace kind of looks like Elsa's castle. Elsa's castle. Super cool, awesome work from uh, Tulio for this one. That's great, yeah. I think it was like one of the most popular uh, marble runs when it came out. What was it, 2016? Yeah. Let me check that out. And of course, you don't have to add a motor or any of that fancy stuff. All, you can just hand turn it. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a lot easier with that. This is motor very <laughs> much a uh, sort of like a starting point. You know, mm -hmm. there's there's a whole bunch of stuff that Cricut oh. can do. This is just one example of it. Uh, it really is a quick project, even though oh, there's yeah. some work. You know, there's kind of work to do. Yeah, it's like a little. It's bit not work. quick, <laughs> but it's a when quick it's done, project. it's quick. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, and it looks super easy. But yeah, mm -hmm. uh, the Cricut can do a lot. It can control. Let's say you wanted to uh, create uh, use an electromagnet to drop the ball bearings. Mm -hmm. You can do that with Cricut. It can do all of that stuff because it has the drivers on it for controlling uh, other things, electromagnets, yeah. uh, fans. Uh, you can try playing with the speed too to see how fast steppers. you can actually get to see um, at what speed it can't yeah. you know, bring the ball bearings back up. Right, let's so. say we have a stepper motor um, you know, that opens and closes the door that would allow Ooh. it to come in. That's you can do a cool. bunch of stuff. We really yeah. need, needed to do this in like a couple days, so that's why we couldn't do everything that the Cricut can do. Mm -hmm. The goal is to kind of get a starting project um, for folks uh, can, who hasn't created a really big build can get started mm -hmm. by this simple build that's actually approachable and easy to do. And again, one of the hero parts that made this you know, relatively quick was the brackets that we were using for the CPX. Uh, one of the ways that I was gonna use this before, uh, which is why I had the model already, was uh, I have a version that has uh, motors on both sides, so you can make like a little brush uh, bot that was gonna be converted for, where is he? I lost him already again. Yeah. <laughs> for Hans, he'll come out one of these days. He's gone forever. Where is he? Here he is, yeah. So this was all gonna be mounted <laughs> inside the little <laughs> paper craft Hans, it. and he was just gonna, you know, change, uh, you know, go left or right based on whatever uh, make code that we had in there. But one day, Hans, <laughs> he contributed. We got this uh, sweet little bracket now that we can attach a lot of components to the top and keep your uh, Cricut CPX a nice little sandwich. Sandwich. Coupon code sandwich. No, it's, it's kit, kit bash. bash. So if you want to <laughs> kit bash, get your kit bashing on. Tip it over to the chat. <laughs> oh, no, there's too much for me to read for uh, this one. Resin printer, yeah, do you guys have one? No, we do not have a resin printer. We had to we donate ours. We got rid of the resin yes. printer. They're not that great for what we do. Don't say that. Awesome Hans, yes, he will be released, I don't know, maybe Christmas or something? Okay. December, I don't know. Maybe for my birthday. <laughs> okay, if you guys have any questions, yeah, you guys any questions I'll try to uh, pin these um, up. Yeah. If you got, and if you want to get any of the parts for this, again, coupon code is KitBash. That's right. All right, that's well, that's off. a cool project. So it's a nice little project. No, it's just like the one. It's like a Swiss Army knife, you know, the the cricket. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, I can do this one day, and then the next day I'll do yeah. something. So, good starting point. Excellent. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and jump into Lair uh, Lair? No way. We got a Lair Lair this week. Yeah, very Sweet. handy Lair Lair for managing. I'm just going to open up one of the boards and just like leave it there and chat about it because there's... Okay, so uh, yesterday I launched a video on YouTube that talks about using Library.io and EagleCAD. The goal was to turn Eagle boards, uh, Adafruit's uh, boards from EagleCAD and turn them into 3D models without, doing, uh, without having to redraw every component and having to redraw all the boards and stuff. So um, using Library.io, which is a, uh, an online generator that can create components, electro components, uh, to use um, in your Eagle CAD designs or in your Fusion 360 designs. 
really cool. So I walked through it. It's about a 30 minute video because we really stepped through populating this board. Uh, I used the, uh, the 1188 cap touch board. And that one is what uh, was a part request uh, actually from GitHub. So shout out to the person who requested that. And I'm just trying to <laughs> navigate around here. I think this is going to be it. So um, yeah, it's a really neat way. And I'm really liking um, the ability to do this. Now the workflow is a little bit, it's still a work in progress. Um, this isn't the ideal way to do it because I kind of have to do this for every new design. Ideally, I think what will happen is um, the Adafruit uh, Eagle library, microbuilder. Hopefully that will become a shared library where it's in the cloud and we can kind of push to it so that every time uh, our, uh, our electrical engineers come up with new board designs, uh, those 3D parts will already be added to it and a part of that. So uh, I won't have to do this work again. <laughs> and I, I, like, I enjoy doing it and it's fun. Um, so a little bit of a manual uh, mapping work of getting these components in, but I'll say I didn't model any of these parts. They were already modeled for me. So it's a bit of a kit bashing going on here. I pull uh, some stuff from DigiKey. I pull some steps from, um, I don't know, uh, CAD, gra GrabCAD, or I get stuff from Eagle Library. So we'll take a look at the Eagle Library right now. Let's just jump in there. So it's a site, it's free. Uh, you sign in with your Autodesk account. There are tons of really great models. You got an Explore tab, you can see all the different um, uh, 3D models that are being added. So simple stuff down to headers and resistors to a little bit more complicated things like uh, this audio jack or even this micro USB port. So all these parts, you just need to grab this really quick. This is kind of a good way to kind of grab your things. But these are already pre-made parts. If you wanted to customize your own part, um, you can do that in the package editor. So you go to pack, oops, you go to dashboard and you go to packages, create new package. You get this like canvas where there's all these uh, um, kind of templated body shapes of different component sizes and they're all labeled here as such. So as I went through this, I was starting to get familiar with all the different body types because you know, I really don't know them all. I'm not an electrical, electrical engineer, but just by coming in here, I kind of understand the different body types and the sort of um, uh, standard, I guess, shapes mm -hmm. that are out there. And apparently there's more coming. So there's cool. even more shapes that are coming, um, which is great. So. Uh, Check out that video. It's on YouTube. Uh, I have it linked in the description of the YouTubes. Um, so it's pretty cool. Yeah. So if you uh, are looking to create one-to-one -one, uh, models of your Eagle CAD boards or other people's Eagle CAD boards to make an enclosure, really neat uh, approach to it. Sweet. So that's the layer by layer this week. We also have some new parts on GitHub. So let's take a look at those. We got the updated. Um, Halloween, so this one has tons of components on it. Really awesome. It's got that trim pot for the audio. It's got that um, IR sensor for seeing things. The pupils dilate when it's dark. It's really cool. You got your cap touch pads there. You got your display and uh, various JST connectors. These are kind of different. We haven't seen a part with a JST connector that has three or four connectors on it. And we got this new connector for the speakers that we're about to carry. These are the Pico blades, and I was able to find this on, on DigiKey, DigiKey's oh. site. They just have the STL ready for me, so just popped it in there. It's worked out really well. Uh, reset buttons, slide switches, and the NeoPixels on there. All right, what else do I got? Um, we did the CapTouch 1188, so that one's up there as well. Got that nice blue color there, a couple LED arrays, really nice. Uh, we got the TLC59711 uh, LED chip driver. Is it a chip driver? I don't know what this thing is, dude. <laughs> it's a 16-bit PWM dri LED driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Anyway, very cool because these were uh, generated with uh, the the tools from the library I/O. So you can say, oh, I want this resistor to be this thick and the legs that thick, and it worked out really well there because I couldn't find one that was going to fit that specific one. So we got that. We also got the Proto Wing. This was this was really cool. The Proto Wing is is like a a great way to kind of create your own cu custom header, you know, custom uh, feather header stack thing. So all the mounting holes are, or all the pinouts are there. Really great. Uh, and then the M40 Express, we got the metal switch, um, the on and off metal switch, or the push button metal switch. We got a MOSFET, we got NeoPixel rings. This is really great. Typically, NeoPixel rings are kind of tough to make, but this one was fun. It just, again, it was automatically generated, so we get all the traces and holes, and that's great because there's a bunch of holes everywhere. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. We have the metal ball push buttons. We're going to talk about this in a minute. 
these uh, are uh, these kind of tactile buttons that have the metal ball in the center there for the actuator. They work really nice, actually. There's some other parts um, that I, I think that's all of them, though. Yeah, I think that's all of them for now. Uh, we'll keep adding more as uh, we get there. And again, if you want to get these parts as step files or STLs, they are uh, right here over on GitHub. If I can get my GitHub CAD parts. There you go. GitHub slash Adafruit slash CAD parts, something like that. Links are in the description. Yeah, there's a, there the RR. And if you go to the issues tab, you can see the, the parts requests. Screenshot of a part in a folder added by, oh, cool, Toddbot. Yeah, that'd be a good idea if I added some screenshots. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. I'll do that. I shall do that. Uh, Kirby wanted a 30 millimeter arcade button. So anyway, you can, uh, you can put some stuff in there. Mm -hmm. And if you contribute, you know, uh, make a fork or something and let me know about it. Like tag me on it, something. So that's what we got going on. Yay, labor layers. Very handy. Yeah. Got our very own K-Town interested in this. Yeah, K-Town uh, does a lot of the uh, electrical engineering work and designing boards too. Well, does he? He's more of the firmware guy. Mm -hmm. uh, Lamar's doing, Lamar and Dean are doing most of the PCB work. Silk screens by Bilby. Cool. Put the link for the GitHub. I've put those in the chat you. if you guys want to grab some of those, as well as the uh, managed library or the library I.O. and Eagle. If you guys want to check out that labor layer? Yay. Full of goodies, nuggets. Yeah. If we go ahead and jump into this week's, what are we prototyping? Oh, you prototyping. Overhead? Mm hmm. What are we prototyping? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, don't pretend like we got nothing. All right, I got. Uh, I guess we'll jump back into Fusion because it's actually yeah, it's like, hmm, what do stuff. I show off? Yeah. All right. Well, we're in Fusion. Um, so the next kind of big project I'm taking on is a, a lightsaber. So we're kind of creating a lightsaber, feather-based lightsaber, down to the point where Lamar is actually designing and, uh, and developing a, a custom saber feather. It's a good wing. board. You heard it from here first, folks. It's a, a feather that's specifically designed to make lightsabers. I think we'll call it the prop wing or something. I don't know. But uh, what I have here is like a, a CAD drawing of the lightsaber that I'm trying to come up with. It's all uh, several pieces that will either snap fit or screw together. Um, it's trying to work out what the thing needs to do. It definitely needs to have a button. So I got this RGB push button here that will hopefully work well. Uh, and then I got a speaker at the bottom here. Yeah, I got this new speaker. Maybe we'll stock this speaker. I gotta test it a little bit more, but it's a 40 millimeter uh, diameter speaker. It's got like four ohms and three watts. It's pretty beefy. I ripped it out of a Bluetooth speaker, like those little ones that you get at the dollar store or whatever. They're pretty powerful, or they're pretty bassy, not so tinny. So I figured maybe we should take a look at those. I got the 22 cylindrical battery here in the kind of heat sink looking area. Uh, and that's the 22 you know, LiPo battery and uh, that'll plug directly into the feather. So as for the feather, oh, I also got this. I'm not sure if we're going to do this or not, but <clears throat> this is kind of Obi-Wan's, Obi-Wan Kenobi's. This is kind of his lightsaber, so it might look similar to it. It's got a little bit of different details on it, like these fins or this grill or whatever. Uh, I figured that there's normally like these bubbles that are in this kind of slot, and I so, so really surprised that it actually, the eight NeoPixel stick fitted absolutely perfect in there. And I was like, what? It's like perfect. Had the right width and height and everything, thickness too. It's pretty cool. That worked out well. And then on the inside here, the main goal is to really have a removable panel. I would love to have a removable panel in this area here where I can have access to the boards. Maybe I need to reset. Maybe I need to, uh, yeah, reset basically. Or recharge the battery. So I'm still figuring out how am I going to recharge this battery because there is a, a built-in charging circuit on the feather and all feathers. Um, so I have this, this honkin' USB cable, extended cable, uh, to, to see if I have enough clearance in this diameter here. And I do, so that's, that's okay, but I would really like it if I could just plug it in. Originally, I had it where the USB port was at the bottom of the hilt, but then the feather would have to be there, and then where would I put the speaker? I think the speaker works really cool here at the bottom hilt. And I like this kind of, this fin, this, the turbine fin looking thing to allow the, 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 the air from the from the sound to come out. Hmm. So another cool thing that I'm putting together is uh, sort of this feather uh, canister, feather something, what do I call it? Feather, I call it feather Cylindrical. stack here. 
It's like a, it's like a, can't, what happened to the, hmm. Oh, there it is, the other holder. There we go. Yeah, so this is like um, two little mounting, uh, cylindrical mounting bits that um, uh, get secured to these two tall standoffs, these brass standoffs. And that kind of forms this like this, this really nice structure that uh, the feather can, the feather and along with all the other components can kind of reside in. So by using all of the library IO stuff and getting the eagle boards, you know, one to one, I was able to come up with, uh, or, or really fit all the pins and, and, and uh, headers in the right spot where it would be. And uh, it's really important because like if I caught a bunch of different things or reor reoriented on the circuit board a bunch of times. And the funny thing is I had already soldered it and it's like, great, now I have to do that again. Either desolder it or make a new one um, because it, where it goes matters. And uh, I should have did this first, you know? So anyway, that's what I got going on so far. It's not finished and uh, it's sort of a, a long-term project, I would say, because it is tied to hardware, custom hardware. Yeah. So it's basically going to be like a hollow wing, uh, but in the shape where it can fit. It's like a prop wing, so yeah. universal. Right. It needs it. to have the amp. It needs to have a speaker Pico blade thing. It needs to have an accelerometer. Um, and it probably should have an SD card thing for adding external sounds and things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Azure Sky, if you're watching, we're, we're watching you. <laughs> we're watching your build and, and uh, get inspired by that. And I'll probably ask you some questions, too. Um, yeah, to handle things, but John Park uh, kind of already figured out uh, the construction of the blade. I think that that's how we're going to go, uh, sandwiching, sandwiching the, the strip uh, in between two plastic corridor and plastic sheets. So check out guy, John's guide if you want to get started on that construction. Mm -hmm. He has uh, uh, two different versions, I believe, of it. Yep. Definitely yep. check those out. Got some really cool effects, like the unicorn effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and he's in the chat room, too, if you want to ask him any questions about the build. Sure. Um, how would how did you diffuse the uh, the LED strips and what did you uh, y did you use any uh, dowels or anything to uh, straighten out the strip? How does the strip stay um, straight inside of the the hilt? Because that's what, one of my worries is to have hot spots and stuff. Mm. But uh, I think John has a good uh, good that. yeah work around for that. Not really work around, but just work to that. Right. Um, <laughs> so some people were saying, I don't know what the reference was, but uh, E3 is saying, what about a right angle USB connector? Oh my god, I was searching for those. I could not find a good one. Oh. They're all like right angled. I'm looking for an upward and a downward one. Uh, I just couldn't find one. I, I, I kept looking and looking. Did I order it? Pretty if pretty I order sure it, it'll be here in like two months or something because it's yeah. from China. Maybe. That's all I got so far. So the last thing's, yeah, go ahead. The other thing was, how about a wireless charger, like, like toothbrushes? Oh gosh, a wireless charger, put a cheat charger somewhere in there? Mm -hmm. So you just like holster it, that'd be yeah. crazy. Yeah, there's not much flat surface area in lightsabers, it's like the top and the bottom. And I already kind of am using the bottom. So let me figure out where else to stick it. Uh, and then of course, coming up with the, the, uh, the blade holder. I mean, I thought about crazy things like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if the, if the blade was detachable via magnets or something, mm -hmm. like a snap, like a, like a little bits thing where it has like these magnetic connectors or something, but uh, I don't know, that's too much. Mm -hmm. Cause then you could like change out the strip or something, but uh, I don't know about that. A lot of stuff to plan out for it. I think Azor said he was working on it for like a year. That's, oh God, yeah. I think that's the right approach to it. Cause you make so many iterations and mm -hmm. you, you use it and you're like, well, you do it. It's not going to be as cool as Azor's though, because he's going to have—he has the Bluetooth. You can control it with his mind. That's what I got going on. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, for me, as usual, or still from last week, we're getting on the guide for the um, saw blade. Woo! Let me get that. There you go. Sorry. Uh, oh, where we go? <laughs> yeah, sorry. I had that figure. So all this is complete. Just building another one to send over to the office and get all of my assembly shots. Dude. Yay! Oh, missing my green there. But yeah, pretty good. Yeah. This is what it looks like without all the glowy stuffs in there. All the chains all working nice and good. Nice little illuminated uh, pummel down at the bottom here. All Ninja Flex handle. And the real thing I I, I like that you did is you you, you took the whole uh, area up here and what you did is you cut uh, the sidewall and, and oh, fully made it fully that, yeah. made it uh, transparent There's with with the filament. Stuff. So that the entire strip, why is it on? Turn on, no? Oh, no, it's fine. Okay. Well, the, <laughs> the, when it lights up, the whole edge is, is uh, 
illuminated. So when you bring this into a dark room, it lights up the entire dark room. Yeah, and you get this really cool, cool effect. Definitely with the uh, UV neo pixels. Big contrast between last year's. Uh, yeah. Uh, I forgot the name of it. Guardian. <laughs> yeah, Guardian Sword Plus Plus. This is the I ancient don't like is that This one has like a built-in um, like holder to put onto like a shelf. Yeah. I forgot how to mount this one when we're done with it. But coming. What about cool. that? Put something here. This is like your shoulder holder. Shoulder no. holder. Shoulder, shoulder rest. Uh -huh. rest. Shoulder rest. <laughs> yeah. That's super cool. Excellent. I'm gonna look after that one. I think next week is ready for that. Oh, yeah. Cool. You guys ready for shop talk? Uh, is it this week's? Uh, oh, do you do shop talk first? Oh. Or what is that noise? It's this week's uh, time lapse Tuesday project, which I should probably go put more uh, dry ice in there just to make it look cool. Should I? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Right. Let me pull up the uh, the web page. All right, so we're doing community makes. This is where we uh, find some designs from the community, and we make them, and we also share makes from other folks. So uh, this one is a, uh, this was Time Lapse Tuesday's post. So that was yesterday's video, yeah. And it is a dragon-themed wine glass. It's a dual extruded three print. Give me a second to switch cameras. Dual extruded three print, original design by, um, Simel, uh, Sintenkaya. Sint yeah. It's a, uh, a remix, multi-material remix by Sipis on Thingiverse. So there are two parts that were separated. And then you can uh, assign different colors to these nozzles when you're 3D printing it on a dual extrusion setup. So let's, I could have played the video. I should have done that. But now I can't. And I have to go to the overhead. Yes. So yeah, so what we're doing is, uh, we really ran out of time, but it would have been great to add some lights to this. So we got some of these fairy lights that we have in the stock and in the store in the Adafruit shop. Um, they're called fairy lights. I call them fairy lights, but they're called LED strands. They're waterproof, uh, sort of gumdrop little uh, LEDs. They're not really um, addressable or anything. They're just kind of your bare LEDs. But they are coated and they're kind of waterproof. You, they're submerged right now in water, and uh, there's a little coin cell holder right here, two coin cells and an on and off switch. And uh, this is just a great way to kind of create a really quick Halloween prop. See, no light, looks terrible. With light, it's amazing. <laughs> Better than this idea for that. Oh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, so we got some dry ice from, from a local supermarket. We haven't created any special, I just I literally tossed it in there. So yeah. you want to take out the LEDs. They work under super cold water, apparently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so excellent design here. Nice little dragons that are going around the cup. This little scale for what looks like almost a dragon egg. It's supposed to be like a wine glass. Mm -hmm. I should have printed this in translucent filament. Mm -hmm. Cool. Be able to see how the dual colors are interacting with each other. But awesome prop print for um, you doing trick or treating or when you're you know handing out candy or whatever. Can you drink the water? Awesome. <laughs> I would not drink the water. Why not? <laughs> it's just really cool. It makes really cool sound effects. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> I like the bubble. This is a little time lapse from. Um, oh crap, I forgot the. Uh, yeah, Sippus is the remixer. And. Um, come on, I gotta do your name justice. Kamel Sitinkaya. Kamel Sitinkaya. Sorry, Kamel. It's the original file up on My Manufactory. If you wanna check that out, the non dual extrusion Correct. version of that. Yeah. Or we'll take just, a look at the page in a second. You yeah. can just merge the file yeah. as well. So I actually printed this one. Uh, Pager normally slices and dices it, and I'm just like, hey, cool. Um, but this time I did it, and I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and it worked, and I'm very happy about that. It was default settings for the most part. Um, I, di I didn't use a prime tower, or ooh shield, any of that stuff. Per per I didn't use any of that stuff, because I didn't need it. Wow. Ultimaker can print it really well. No, I'm just saying oh, yeah, how my default. experience printing this, because I normally don't set up dual extrusion prints, and I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so I'm happy that uh, it kind of works out. Default stuff, yeah. Yeah. Before you had to do so many little tweaks and changes to all the individual operations right. and each, that happened. Each, each kind of part has its own set of geometry and mm -hmm. problems that could happen. Yeah. So you kind of have to you alleviate have to those like, via slicing. Like adjust temperature when it's raised and hold the heat for, you know, you had to do all this crazy. Yeah, it's getting better. Priming and you gotta believe. wiping. It's getting better. And, uh, this is the original design. Remember, come out. He put a coffee cup in there. It's good. Oh, that's how it's designed to be. Uh, Fanta. Wine glass. Yeah. 
So in this little holder. So wait, 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 wait. So you're up. saying the water isn't leaking from here? Oh yeah, it's, how is uh, that, how it's is water that tight. Yeah, yeah. The only water that's coming off is water How did you do that? Splashing. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't, uh, I don't know how. I, I think I, it's three shells. I, I don't know. I'm sorry. This isn't one of the, <laughs> the settings that we put in there. <laughs> um, um, so the video does have the slice settings, though, right? Yeah, slice settings. The only thing it doesn't have is how many walls or how many perimeters. I think it's just two. Yeah. I think yeah, it's I think two. it defaults two. It defaults three, but I think I put two because I'm like, no, faster. Eight three is saying it looks like a Python cup. Python cup? Right. It's a good idea. Oh, we should remix this. Remix it with Blinka. Blinka cup. Huh? Make a Blinka cup. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Yeah. If we were to read, you know, design from scratch, put the electronics in the base, uh, thread the wire through the center That's there. Actually, what I wanted to do cool. have a hole that was right in the middle here, just so. Um, but I don't have a you know three extruders, so you could have the third material be the translucent. So it's just a tube going all the way up, so you can allow the light to uh, pass through. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's if you're bedding the light at the base. I see what you mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. All right. Cool. That's Those are the. Community make. Yeah. Actually, there's more. There are. There's more. So let's take a look at them. Got some more here. It's Halloween time. People are printing your Mario Boo. We made a Mario Boo ghost thing. It's supposed to be a planner, but you know, we used it as candy, candy. bowl. So use it as a candy bowl as a tip for a big one if you like Mario and stuff. It's, it's a single print. It's not a dual extruded print. You just paint it. So he painted it. It's cool. Sweet. This is this is cool. This is a Pi Boy 300 MK kit. So let me read the description as best as I can. So gentleman here, uh, Jack63, he says the printing of this project went pretty well. However, the electronics and the software of this project is outdated and requires an experienced Python programmer. This is not a learning project, and if you try to get support for it from Adafruit, you will likely get ignored and then blocked by the support team. Oh gosh, that hurts. So what happened here is the, the, the Pip-Boy project was done a couple years ago, back when the Pi 3 wasn't announced yet. So this is like B plus time frame area. I didn't write the code and nobody from Adafruit really wrote the code. This is actually uh, code from Sabas on, on, uh, on Twitter and GitHub. And I kind of took that, I saw it, uh, that he was working on it. I, f I think I forked it or just downloaded it. And then I had Tony DeCola kind of help me uh, make the, uh, the code for the thing. Switch. It's very underdeveloped, very kind of almost didn't work when we kind of created the project. And it's just kind of hard to support that code because nobody really has an in invested interest to kind of continue with it. So me and Pedro kind of joke a lot and say, like, it's kind of my hated project because all the support team the, knows about this. Yeah, they're they all know it. Hey. Yeah, they're always you know, like, hey, we got another another one who's trying to build this, and you help them out. And it's like I can't write <laughs> Python. Somebody. So anyway, the the thing about the support team, it's it's kind of mean because the only reason if you're going to get uh, banned or ignored from the Adafruit team is because we can't help you there. We're not our support team isn't there to write custom code for you guys. We're there to make sure that your parts aren't broken. So all his part, his LEDs work, his display works, his Pi works. If it didn't, we would l gladly send you a new one, mm -hmm. replace it, send you the money back if you prefer. Yep. But as far as like actually finishing the project yeah, for you via writing the code for you, we can't do that. Yeah. I can't do that. <laughs> okay. you can make sure the I don't have the skill to do that. We yeah. can make sure that the libraries we write, that yeah. our engineering team writes. So, so the part about this is not a learning project, I don't know, man. Did you, you learn some did stuff you, in printing? Did you not learn how to, uh, anyway, we're not fighting here. <laughs> we're just saying, um, you know, it hurts a little bit. We, we apologize that we couldn't have done better, but uh, I just don't got the chops to write the Python. But I'm happy you posted the make of it. That was really cool. And it looks like you just got the background there in the pie. You just set the image as a background. You got to work with it. You got to work with what you get. Uh, um, and he, he added more detail and stuff to it. So that, that's cool. And I'm happy that he did say, well, at least the printing worked out. So I'm happy with that. So it's just one of the things. So one of my tips would be like, if you're very new and you're starting with a project, maybe not so much start with something so so massive of a build. I mean, this thing is kind of it might turn you lots off of wire. It might turn you off to ever do another one. So that's why we try to do really simple projects so that people that are new, because there's always new people, mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, can actually build them and have a little bit of that, um, that, that small successes of like, hey, I got this thing working. The lights are working. Yeah, yeah, yeah sweet. On to the next thing. Mm -hmm. So what do you guys think? I don't know. Maybe we're being too hard. All right, but cool make. I shared it. Next time <laughs> we got... Awesome one. This is amazing. This is from Josh Peterson. He's been working on this for a while, and he's this just finished uh, releasing it. This is the Pi Girl Advanced, Pi Girl Zero Advanced. Huge screen, um, better buttons, custom PCB. Files are available to download now. The uh, his learn guide is right here. 
I've been walking Check through it. This what this PCB does is it takes all of the various boards, the amplifier, the power okay. boost, the Pi, and it sticks it all together so there's minimal wiring. This is what ideally we wish we did. Go to the actual PCB screenshot of it so you can see how dope this looks. How dope this is, yeah. Great work, Josh. Uh, so this is really, a, it's not opening. Oh, yeah, it's just a big photo. Yeah, this is really what we wish we did, you know, back in those years, but I didn't have the chops to do uh, Eagle yet. Mill. Yeah, we, we didn't, didn't have Eagle. another mill. We didn't know Eagle. There's a lot of things. Um, but Josh really uh, made a phenomenal remix of this uh, and w walks you through how to build one. So if you guys want to build your own, definitely check out the parts. I have the links all in the description. And uh, he walks you through all of it. This is a very thorough guide. There's probably one of more thorough guides yeah. um, that I've seen. So he walks you through all nice gifts and all that with, with captions and everything. And then, like sanding parts and Yeah, so there's the inside of it. But it drastically improves it by everything. <laughs> like everything is way oh, yeah. better for it. Um, so excellent. You get like a couple millimeters back. From yeah. That. Also, it says because it's using the 3.5 inch, he had to figure out how to uh, do FP. the FP because it doesn't support we, or FP FBCP um, doesn't work with the 3.5. So um, there's been some collabs going on on the RetroPie team and in uh, Juji uh, for creating like a, a kind of a variant of it where it does work with it. So you get some really nice. Um, frame rates off these 3.5 inch screens now. So if you haven't heard about it, you've been out of the loop for RetroPie like I have been, <laughs> check it out. Now's a good time to kind of get back into it and see all the cool projects going out. And there's a bunch of other uh, projects. If I didn't mention you, uh, please let me know because I know there's a bunch of projects out there. A lot, of, a lot of them have like their own Discord communities and things. Um, you got the PyTops, you got the uh, pseudo mods, a lot of different ones. Um, David, jo uh, David Johnson. DIY engineering, he, he's got his own set too. Uh, but this one, really good uh, documentation. It's an actual build that you can put together. I think it's going to be cool. So uh, Josh is actually sending me some of the parts. So I'm going to print them out. We'll probably do like a little time lapse or something of the Sweet. assembly and, and kind of talk about it. So really cool. Awesome work from John Peterson, the Pi Girl. It's your advanced. So check it out. I think this is the last one. Nope, that's not the last one. Yeah, this is the last one. Rack and Pinion. This was in the morning. Pedro showed me this. This is from. Uh, Desers on Instagram, and he uh, uh, posted uh, a make of his, a little video of his rack and pinion build. Very cool. Actually works. Love the music on this. It says it works good, so I'm happy because it, it took a little bit to get that <laughs> gears fighting against friction. Are the uh, googly eye? Uh, they're mounts, smaller. Yeah. Are they? Um, it's funny. They're smaller. Are they, uh, <laughs> they're standard 20 mil. No, no, no are they? Uh, Parameter? Parametric? No. Parametric? No. Mm, no. I tried to hold the parametric route, but it's, it is parametric, but you are just one thing, everything breaks. <laughs> Very cool. I think it's going to do it. That's going to do it for this, this week's show. Week's show. <clears throat> Forget coupon code for today's show is Kitbash. Why can't I Hello. remember the number? There it is. Kitbash. You get 10% off on your Adafruit Orwer. Works on everything except subscriptions and. What'd you say? Gift certificates, subscriptions? Gift certificates and subscriptions. That's it? Yeah. Yep. All right, cool. We got a show and tell later tonight. Ask an engineer as well. Full Get lineup some... of shows later tonight, yep. Mm -hmm. We'll be on show and tell along with everybody showing off their awesome projects they've got for this week. That's right. If you'd like to join the show and tell, all you gotta do is hang out on the YouTube or in the Discord chat room and uh, say you wanna come in and they'll invite you or give you a link. Yep, right around 7.30. The link for that will be posted. Just click on that. The chat rooms, yeah. I'll log you right in. Excellent. Tomorrow, John Park, 4 p.m. Eastern time. John, let me know if, how did that fall? Oh, because this is a, I've been pushing it more and more over the show. Huh, so John Park, Thursday, John 4 p.m. Lots of awesome, sweet projects every week along with some cool programming tips using make code. Yeah, the make code minutes. Python, other cool stuff. All your orders help support everybody on the team. Yay. So thank you so much for helping us out by ordering stuff every now and then. Mm -hmm. Coupon codes are happen every week, so don't forget. This happens every week. It's not just today. Yep. Every week you get one. Thank you, John. Thank you, everybody in the chat room for hanging out with us. Oh, they're double Johns. <laughs> Both Johns in the house. Yeah. Sweet. Well, we did answer how we got the, uh, the uh, new pixel strip to stand, but we'll read that after the show. Oh, sweet. If you guys want to scroll through the chat for that, mm -hmm. it's in there. Excellent. 
That's gonna be it for this week. I don't have a new, oh no, we didn't talk about the. Oh, it's not even released yet, so maybe later today. We'll talk about it next week. Okay. If, if you wanna preview it. Yeah, so we, we got, got a new printer in the shop. We kinda talked out. about it a little bit. Um, and it, this is from Flash Forge Mono Price. It is a 150 kind of cubed printer. It's got an on-screen touchscreen. It's got Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi built hood, in. Filament checker, uh, audio. Yeah, so it's got a filament sensor. Got light controls. You got. You got a canister thing that you can put your filament in if you want. You don't have to. You can put a 3D printed spool holder and just have an open frame like that. That's if you really want kind of the humidity not to get into your filament. Yeah. This is cool. Yeah, so what Built is this? In probe for leveling. Nice little automated um, little probe there. Goes down, makes it a lot easier to level yeah. this thing. So definitely recommend it if you're just starting out or if you're seasoned pro and you don't want a fussy machine. Yeah, so this is great. Quality we, we've already put a thousand hours onto it. And uh, it, if, if it fails, it's because we're too, we're too perfectionist. We, we want to make sure every the first layer is great. You yeah. can let it go, but I, no, no, I'm going to stop. I want that circle yeah, to come yeah. out right. So anyway, uh, many hours. Uh, it's lit. It's, got a, it's fully enclosed. You get all that stuff. The hood, the door, the yeah. bolt build plate. You got build tack on there. You're going to get nice adhesion for that. Yeah. Prince Ninja Flex, PLA. Ninja um, Flex, yeah. Probably small ABS parts because it is fully enclosed. Uh, the, the bed actually feels kind of warm when you, you take, take it out, out yeah. even though it's not heated at all. Yeah. Take a look at some of the um, Let me focus lightsaber there. parts that you're prototyping. Actually, no, it's another one. It's a new pixel thruster oh, that's for right, like yeah. a e-bike or something. Yeah. So uh, yeah, this is a glass bed. You could take off this. This here oh, is yeah, sort of a build tack. Um, the build tack type of uh, it's it's a little coarse, um, but you do get matte kind of surface finish on it. Not glossy, but you could probably peel this off and use the glass underneath, or you could use a PEI sheet if you wanted to put that over it. Oh, yeah, that would um, but this work, is yeah. this is this has lasted a lot. I got a couple nicks in there already. But we've been using this for months now, and uh, it's still holding up pretty well. How's that looking? Not too bad. This is a really hard print pretty to good. do because so it has to print all the holes first, and then it does the outline. It did pretty good. It did pretty good. Those are, uh, see if these fit for me. So that's, uh, you, you might have seen that when the layer, layer doesn't fit at all, does it? Yes, it does. Oh, sweet. So I put a 0.2 millimeter gap in between the edges. and. The radius is, was wonky numbers. It's like 0.625, 32178. It's got a really, you know, sub chopped up fraction for millimeters because yeah. it was designed for inches or whatever. The jewel um, just but if it's, needs, uh, I brought it in from Eagle and I got an absolute thing. So I didn't take my calipers and measure it or anything. Yeah. It's one to one. For your, um, printing out stuff and it's like, oh man, why doesn't it fit? Oh, always it's that. check your tab on the circuit board. You can always cut that off. Sand it down. Sand yeah. it down. And it should fit outside. Like do it right now. <laughs> yeah, on the outside, yeah. But no, I mean, do that like outside. The fiberglass messes oh, up. Oh, yeah, yeah, lungs. yeah, yeah. Totally, yeah. Anyway, I, I need to clean so that jewel up. So this should fit pretty good. Just got to trim off those. Uh, Excellent. Yeah, so when them. it comes to production ready cool. parts, we're using this machine all the time, not just it, statues and things. Since we got rid of, uh, you might have seen it on Twitter, we donated like 10 3, 3D printers to the AT That's right. uh, makers. So we got rid of a bunch of the ones that we were using with NinjaFlex. We got rid of it. We uh, donated. donated them. It's like donated. A... Um, this was the only printer that was able to print the NinjaFlex 85? This is 80. tall. This is like the max tall you can print on it, yeah. right? And this is the um, the elastic NinjaFlex. Yeah, this is the too. rubbery kind. So no mods, no special just loads right in. Settings too, right? Did you heat it up higher or no? I had to slow it down. I did okay, have to you just heat slow it down. up to 230. Yeah. Well, 20. you have to, yeah. Okay, cool. And uh, printing at 30 millimeters a second. Pretty solid. And it looks really good. No under extrusion, great surface finish. Yeah. Was there any string that you had to chop off? Probably one or two. Um, I think this one still has it on there, as so you can see. Oh, I see, there yeah, and that, and that oh, overhang that there. Overhangs on it. Yeah. To be adjusted by just adding like a chamfer or something. Yeah. If you were to print there. something uh, like, like Cheetah, you could probably make it watertight. Oh yeah. Make some gaskets. And when you do have fillets on there, you can see how good it does with the overhangs on that. What? Oops. There we go. Really nice job on that. So again, super simple parts, but they are nice and uh, flexible for the, uh, the handle on the uh, saw blade. Sweet. 
What else we got for this printer? Um, we're talking about more. <laughs> we're supposed to talk about it more la next week. Oh yeah. We'll uh, it's in. It's not in stock yet. We're still setting up. Maybe to, today. Yeah. yeah maybe today. Later today. We'll see. Yeah. Uh -huh. Great price point. Six fifty for all that stuff. That is what a printer bot, simple, used to cost. Yeah. <laughs> like five years ago or whatever. Mm -hmm. You get so much more out of the Wi-Fi. Actually works. Like it. Pretty reliable. It loads up. Yeah, like, it's reliable. You know, usually I have not had to use the SD card insert thing mm -hmm. uh, since we got it, so it's great. Yeah. Now you're looking at the product page yeah, here, yeah. so what the preview of it will look like. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have the 175 mil uh, filament? You can say the only, <laughs> yeah, so 175 filament. Let me say it again. 175 filament. We still stock it. It's okay. Yeah. Wi-Fi door opens. Uh, we. You can set the, the you can use the pause if the door opens. Yeah. So lots of little safety features like that. You can use uh, simplify. You can use flash print. Mm -hmm. I I just use flash print. I think it works pretty well. They just came they out got with great an support today. stuff. The support materials is good there. Uh, and they just came with an update today. The flash print. Yeah. Uh, or you can use uh, Cura. I think as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll see. It's using the Sailfish firmware ish Maybe. type. Yeah. Maybe. So there you go. Cool. Let's check it out. Let us know if you have any other questions about it. And I'll let you know next week what I don't like about it. <laughs> it's just a very small or big thing. We'll see. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. That's going to be it for this week. Don't forget coupon code and shows tonight and tomorrow. I guess we'll see you guys next week. Do we have a fail? No? Just uh, the you same do one. one from last week. All right. We'll see the fail from last week. <laughs> Bye, everybody. See you guys. Oh, I have to put the button. Bye.